Okay, so uh, knight f6, let's try something else. Let's go for potentially an Imzo Indian here. Let's go for a Queen's Indian with b6. He goes bishop g5. Not the most usual move. I'll just develop with bishop to b7. Kick out his bishop. And I've won the bishop here. It's not a big advantage at all to have won the bishop pair because um, I have a lot less space in the position. Uh, he has a very solid center. So because of this, I'm actually even playing bishop b4 and I'm suggesting to him that I, I may very well uh, give back my bishop, um, my bishop pair advantage extremely soon. But not necessarily. If he doesn't bother me here, maybe I won't. Here, in fact, I'm going to go for bishop takes f3. And the idea is that if queen takes f3, queen takes f3, pawn takes f3, pawn takes, pawn takes, I want this damage structure for him. Um, now, I don't know how good that actually was. Maybe there was some subtle point like knight b5, knight, then I have to go knight c6 to avoid um, tricks like knight c7. Um, Although that's actually not true. Knight b5, maybe I could have taken here, knight c7, then taken here. Suddenly I'll end up two pawns up. If he goes rook takes f2, I'll go bishop c5 and win an exchange. Um, things like that. So the, there are some tricks like that. And then if he ever takes, then I could go back knight to a6 on the knight. On on, um, on a8 might have some problems. So there were some very complicated lines there arising from all of that. But none of that happened because he took like this. And this was kind of the 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 basic version of what I was aiming for, which is that by creating, by exchanging everything here and also exchanging these guys, I give him these doubled isolated pawns, which I think are quite um, unpleasant to deal with. And here, I think I have a, a tactical shot. I think I can actually take this pawn on d4. His idea is that he wants to, um, to win this rook, but my idea is I can take this uh, knight on uh, c3. And the point is my threat is knight e2. Maybe actually, sorry, maybe he could have actually just gone rook here on d1. And then the point is, after I take, then he saves his bishop. Um, or if rook d1, I take here, he takes, then I take here, he moves the king, then I go here, defend this pawn, he kicks me away, then I take here, and then he takes here. Something like that. And in the end, he's got four pawns and I've got six. So I've got knight and two pawns for, for a rook. Um, but his rooks are quite, and I've got a much better structure, his rooks are quite active. If I had to intuitively guess, I would say that position is equal. But he goes b takes c3. So basically what I'm saying is maybe after bishop takes, if he goes rook d1, you know, bishop takes b2 maybe is the best move. Bishop e4, something like that. And in that position, I've got seven pawns and he'll have uh, five. In that case, I still have a knight and two pawns for the pieces. But he, his, because he won't have won the pawn on d7, the structure is a lot better. Those lines are a little bit advanced there um, in terms of what I'm showing, but I'm basically just comparing between the possibility of rook takes bishop here and bishop takes uh, b2. And I feel like materially they'll both be the same, but I think after bishop takes b2, there are less open lines and less activity of his rooks, so his extra exchange counts for a little bit less. So... But anyway, he didn't do any of that, um, instead opting for uh, for this variation. And here I think I just get a, a, a completely winning rook and pawn endgame. He goes after <coughs> he goes after the d7 pawn, so I'm just going rook d8 um, as the only way to defend the pawn. Then I'll bring the king over, I'll place the king on e7, and then I'll bring my, my other pieces. Maybe even play d5 here, pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes, and pawn takes. King takes, no, but that's that's just craziness. That That is not a, a clean, clearly winning king and pawn endgame at all, even if my structure is a lot better. Um, so do not do that. Right now my structure is... His structure is extremely ugly. Um, his pawns are, are all isolated and two sets of them are doubled. So it's uh, it's about as bad as a structure can get. Uh, now the good thing, I mean, not the good thing, but the uh, one thing that makes the task a little bit more manageable 
is the fact that uh, the pawns here are actually quite near to each other. So the king can actually potentially defend these against an attack and these at the same time. So I think that's something that is very um, is very under talked about point at the club level, but the distance of the weaknesses can sometimes be a, a big factor. For example, if this pawn was here instead, um, I think that structure would be a little harder to defend. Um, but in this case, d5 here is a tactical um, opportunity that white overlooked by playing a4. He needed to have moved his rook somewhere to take away that option. Uh, but after d5, yeah, he took and resigned. Uh, the problem is black is threatening to just take here and then follow up with taking here. And um, and if you if you play c takes d5, he resigned because rook takes d5 will uh, will pick up this rook. So uh, 